Hello, I am Etienne Talman from the Micromechanical and Horological Design Laboratory at EPFL in Switzerland. I am now going to present you some of our research on a novel triple cross flexure pivot with minimized parasitic shift. So this will be the content of my presentation today. I will start by introducing flexure pivots and the state of the art. Then I will describe our new design, which we call the trivet. Then I will analyze some important mechanical properties of the trivet, and then I will uh, summarize the conclusions that we made about this new architecture. So first of all, flexure pivots are uh, mechanisms that use the deformation of slender elastic beams to guide a motion that closely approximates a rotation. As you can see in this example of the crossed flexure pivot, the mobile body performs a motion that closely approximates a rotation about a virtual axis that would be placed at the intersection of the flexures. This has many advantages. For instance, since we only use uh, elastic deformation, we don't have any contact friction between the mobile and fixed body. So we have a very efficient system. You don't need to lubricate it. There is no wear. Additionally, everything can be fabricated in one piece, which can be uh, interesting for manufacturing, but also um, the fact that you don't need to assemble your system. And also there is no place since everything is in one part. Um, there are some important limitations to these systems. Uh, first of all, we have uh, parasitic center shift. As I mentioned, this uh, deformation or this motion only approximates a rotation about a fixed axis, but there's no actual axis. So um, often the center of rotation moves a bit during the motion and the stroke of these pivots is obviously limited by uh, the deformation of the material in the flexures. The most well-known flexure pivot is the cross flexure pivot that has been also widely studied in literature. It consists of two flexures that cross symmetrically and their intersection defines the rotation axis of the pivot. There are mainly two configurations that are defined by the crossing ratio delta, where D is the distance from the center of rotation to extremity A of the flexures and L is the distance from uh, extremity A to extremity B of the flexures. And when these two vectors are of uh, opposite sign, the sign of delta is negative and the flexures cross uh, physically. When uh, delta is positive, the two vectors are in the same direction and the crossing point or the rotation axis is outside of the physical structure. The mechanical properties of this pivot depend on its crossing ratio delta, and we can uh, list three values that are particularly interesting for certain applications. For instance, when the value is minus 0 0.5, then the flexures cross at their half. And in this configuration, the, the material is, is used as its best. I mean, the, the stress is evenly distributed on the flexures during the deformation. That, so that is when you can get the maximum stroke for given flexures. However, it has a significant parasitic center shift. You can see in this illustration how the center of rotation moves during the rotation of the pivot. And since the flexures cross, you need to have an architecture on multiple levels. There's another interesting value, which is uh, when the flexures cross at the, about 13% of their length. Uh, in this particular case, the parasitic uh, shift is minimal. However, the stroke is uh, much lesser for given flexures because the stress distribution is, is not uh, as optimal as in the first case. And again, we need uh, a decent multiple levels due to the crossing. Then what is interesting also is when delta is greater than zero, then the design is planar, which is good for uh, compactness or for some fabrication methods. And it also has uh, what we call a remote center of compliance because the axis of rotation is outside of the structure. So this is very interesting for some particular applications. Um, however, this has also a parasitic center shift that is not negligible. And uh, the stroke is also not as good as in the first case. There are many other flexure pivots that exist, and now I'm just going to uh, list two of them that are particularly interesting in our context. There's the butterfly flexure hinge, which has a serial arrangement of RCC uh, flexures, and um, this serial arrangement allows to have a large stroke because each flexure does only part of the total motion. Uh, due to the symmetry, the parasitic center shift is uh, cancelled, and also it has a planar design. However, uh, this has redundant degrees of freedom uh, 
which can be excited by external vibrations, for, for instance. Then there is also the generalized triple cross spring flexure pivot from this article. That is interesting because uh, it uses three flexures instead of two to have a symmetry that allows to minimize uh, the parasitic center shift in comparison to the cross flexure pivot. Um, it can have also uh, pretty large strokes depending on the crossing ratio. However, since we have three flexures when only two are needed, it is over constrained and this can lead to very high stresses in, in the material. For instance, when there you have uh, thermal effects and uh, also you need to have multiple levels to your architecture. So now that we've seen our state of the art, we can introduce our new design, which we call the trivet. Here you can see the kinematic diagram of the general uh, trivet configuration. So we can see that we have a fixed body and a mobile body. Both of them can be inverted. And then between the mobile and the fixed body, we have these three arms that um, consist of these um, connecting rods with pivots at each end and uh, a slider. So these, these uh, pivot pivot arms all do the same angle with respect to this line that connects the center of rotation to this outer pivot. And this allows to guide uh, the, the rotation uh, of the mobile body about this center of rotation. Then you have these sliders here that actually um, absorb the change of length between the mobile body and the fixed body due to the fact that these arms are not fixed at the center of rotation. And this is uh, the trick that is used to cancel the parasitic center shift. But in order to have a proper uh, rotational motion, we need all these sliders to always um, slide by the same amount. And this is achieved by having these additional links that create a parallelogram structure. So it constrains always the sliders to have the same distance. So let's see it move. In this little animation, you can see how uh, the sliders here absorb the, the parasitic motion. And as a result, the mobile body does a perfect rotation about the center, even for uh, large motions. In some applications, it can be interesting to have an architecture with more symmetry. And this is achieved here by placing the three arms um, with the same angle between them and adding an additional chain here with an extra degree of freedom so as not to create an over constraint. Then uh, in order to have uh, flexure implementation of the system, we replaced all the slider joints with um, parallel linkages here, which also um, very well approximate a linear motion for small displacements. And we can see also that those uh, slider pivot um, joints can be implemented here with these uh, pivot pivot links that um, are perpendicular to the sliding motion. Now uh, we can see how this uh, structure moves, as again, it is uh, statically determined. And we can see that we again have this very nice rotational motion. For some larger deformations, we can see that there is a bit of uh, parasitic motion. The circle is not, it doesn't stay totally constant, but for small deformations, which is what we have um, usually for flexure pivots, the rotational guidance is fulfilled. Here we can see a flexure implementation of the trivet with this uh, physical mock-up. We see that all the pivot pivot uh, links have been replaced by leaf springs. And now we can see the motion. Uh, we can see that it performs a very nice rotational motion about the center of the system. As in the case of the cross flexure pivot, we can characterize the trivet arch architecture using the parameter delta, which is the crossing ratio of the main flexures. When delta is greater than zero, then the vectors from O to A and A to B are in the same direction and the architecture is planar. Uh, and when uh, delta is uh, smaller than zero, then um, these two vectors are in opposite direction and um, we have a physical crossing of the flexures. In order to realize this physically, we can use an architecture on multiple levels. Uh, you can see here an example on three levels where those uh, lines show how the bodies are connected. We will see that this parameter delta determines the mechanical properties of the pivot. Okay, so now that we've introduced our new design, we can look at its mechanical properties. So 
the most important property here is the parasitic center shifts because the, the idea behind this design is to actually yeah, reduce the parasitic center shift by absorbing uh, this, uh, this, this uh, parasitic motion of these flexures and having a nice uh, symmetry in comparison to the cross flexure pivot. So here we did uh, finite element simulations for our uh, new pivot and uh, we compare the parasitic shift uh, to the parasitic shift of the cross flexure pivot for which we have an analytical formula that you can see in blue here. So we did a 15 degree rotation of the pivot and then looked at the parasitic center shift and normalized it by the radius of the pivot in order to have results that are independent of size and to compare different kind of architectures. We can see that in comparison to the cross flexure pivot, we decrease the parasitic shift by one order of magnitude. Um, another important property of, of flexure pivots is their rotational stiffness, the applications where you want to minimize the stiffness or where you want to use the stiffness in order to have an oscillatory motion. So here um, we actually show that we can use this formula to calculate the, the rotational stiffness of the pivot. It is actually the same formula that is used for the crossed flexure pivot, except that we have a three main flexures instead of two. So we multiply it by one and a half. And uh, we see that this formula is invalidated by our finite element simulations. Finally, we look into the admissible stroke of our new pivot. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a very important property because it often is a limitation of this kind of, of mechanisms. So here we can actually reuse the formula for the cross flexure pivot since the kinematic boundary conditions uh, for the flexures are, are the same in the case of the trivet or the cross flexure pivot. So we can see that the admissible uh, angle or stroke uh, depends on the admissible strain in the material. Here we use 0.4%, which is something that can be achieved with uh, common uh, materials. And also it depends on the slenderness of the flexures. So here we use this dimensionless parameter to make uh, the results again independent of the size of the pivot. So, so we can see here from our uh, final element simulations that the trivet behaves closely to what is predicted uh, by this analytical formula. Uh, we can see that the, the crossing ratio at half of the flexures allows for the largest uh, stroke. And when we use uh, the remote center of compliance or the planner uh, configuration, then we decrease the stroke for, for given flexures. Uh, you note here uh, that our uh, find element results are far from the actual predictions of the analytical model. And uh, this is because we actually used three layers. So the, um, the structure is asymmetrical along the rotational axis. And this uh, has as a result that when we do large deformations, then we can have a significant um, out of plane tilt of the flexures. And uh, this uh, creates a transverse or a combined uh, load load cases that increases the stress in the, in the flexures for uh, large deformations. Um, so this can actually be solved easily and it is actually already done uh, in, the, in the cross flexure pivot where you have the same problem actually by just uh, having an architecture, architecture that is also symmetrical um, in the out of plane uh, direction. So now that we've seen the mechanical properties of the trivet, I will conclude by summarizing some of its main advantages. So we've seen that for different crossing ratios, we can have a very small parasitic center shift. Uh, the mechanism is not over constrained. Uh, we also don't have any internal degrees of freedom that can be excited by vibrations or so. We can, we can choose a crossing ratios that can either uh, maximize the, um, the angular stroke or optimize the stress distribution in the flexures with uh, delta equals minus 0.5, or we can have a RCC configuration or planner design with delta greater than zero while still uh, having a small parasitic shift, which is not the case in the cross flexure pivot. Um, more on the, on the disadvantages or limitations of these architectures, we have a lot of flexures if you compare it to a cross flexure pivot that has only two flexures. And um, we, have, we need quite a, a few levels three levels in some cases, or even five when we have that, that symmetry, so that can complicate fabrication. I will conclude this presentation by summarizing the main contributions of our research. We invented a novel uh, one degree of freedom isostatic planar kinematic structure 
that produces a pure rotation. You can see this animation. We implemented this kinematic structure into a one degree of freedom flexure pivot called the trivet. And finally, we demonstrated uh, quantitatively in terms of parasitic shift and admissible angular stroke, the advantage of this uh, trivet in comparison to the well-known cross flexure pivot. Thank you very much for your attention.